thank God for being here this morning. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I'm Pastor Mike. I'm one of the pastors here at Open Bible. And I'm just excited to be here as always. I'm excited to give God praise. I'm excited to be among the brothers and the sisters of God. Amen. 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 I want to, before we get going, I want to just welcome you here. If it's your first time here, I ask that you would uh, get one of our visitors' cards so that we can we can uh, reach out to you, so that we can pray with you, so we can see how we can serve you. But most of all, we just want to just say thank you for choosing to come worship with us. You could have been anywhere, You've been anywhere, but today we chose to come by the leading of the Holy Spirit. We don't believe anything in this haphazard. We don't believe anything in this coincidental. We don't believe in love. We believe that God orchestrated this day for you to be here for whatever reason, either to encourage us or to be encouraged by us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we thank you for being here. Secondly, I want to say to, to the new mother and father, the new mother, I don't the mother's not here, which is good. She's probably resting. But to the new father, he's smiling from ear to ear. He's excited. I know he's glad that, that, that they have, have had the baby and everything. Uh, but uh, to uh, Mr. Curtis and his wife, they had their baby. So we just want to say congratulations to our Muslim Bible Baptist Church family and everything. Give us some details. Wait, name, when they were born. Come on now, stop trying to act shy, Bob. Come on now. Come on now, stand up and shout it out. So, you've been telling everybody else, I didn't get my gum cigar off. You'll be getting it. You'll be getting it. challenge everyone, I don't want to challenge everyone uh, before we get to the mess. I want to challenge everyone 
that if there's someone that you have an off with, call me. If there's someone that you have an off with, brother, sister, uncle, an aunt, cousin, a daughter, a son, mother, father, co worker, neighbor, niece, whatever, pastor. <laughs> holiday season, make this time a conscious effort to get that strength. Make a conscious effort to get that strength. I challenge you to do that, to get that strength. Because how many people know times are getting short? Christ is on his way back. He really is. And he's been on his way back since he left, but he's really on his way back. When we see the things that we see happening around you have to look and say, Christ is on his way back. And the one thing you don't want to be caught with, with your work undone, amen? amen. You don't want to be caught hanging on because somebody in the sixth grade took your lunch money. You take that and now you have it. You couldn't forgive him, amen? Amen. So work on that. But today, I want to talk about something that, that is kind of near and dear to all of our hearts. Near and dear. I want to talk about living a blessed life. Living a blessed life. Now, I want to say at the onset of this, I'm not talking a prosperity message. I will say that again. I'm not preaching a prosperity message. Yes, God wants us to prosper, but he said I would that you would prosper and be in health, just as your soul prospers. Amen? So, he's, I'm not talking about this name and claim it. You know, I'm not talking about this, you know, confessing and, per and possessing. I'm not talking about this needed and needed. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm not saying that we're talking about you. All you got to do is believe it and you can receive it. I'm not saying any of those things. That is not what we're talking about when I'm talking about living a blessed life. Amen? Amen. So, if you would grab your Bible, if you would grab your Bible. And we're going to look at Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 8. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 8. And look what the word of the Lord said. Now, and I want you to keep your Bibles open. I want you to look at that because we're going to walk through this scripture because look at what Jeremiah is saying here. It says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. It says, He is like a shrub in the desert. He shall not see any good. He should dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an inhabited salt land. But look at what he says. He says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by the water that sends out his roots by the streams. And does not fear when heat comes. For its leaves remain green. And he is not anxious in the year of drought. For he does not cease to bear fruit. This is the word of God. By the people of God. For the people of God. I want to start off by saying this, Ms. Lee. That life has many paths. And it has many paths. Some are crooked, some are dark, and some lead to destruction. Other paths are blessed. They're protecting you. When God is protecting you, He's fulfilling your dream. Uh, uh, he's doing all those things. That, and, and, and regardless of what we think, Miss Pam, we all choose. One path. 
either we're going to choose a path of blessing or a path of curses. How many people believe that? And when we choose the path of blessing, it leads to what we consider a satisfied life. Am I right about it? A blessed life is a life that has experienced God, that knows God, and that God seems to be moving in, right? So when we, when, when we say we, we got a blessed life, I, I was looking up blessed. I, I was looking up what it is. I was looking on the line, and, and I began to see that in social media, now everybody wants to hack, hashtag blessed. And so I began to look up this, and, 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 and I came up with some things, and I want us to walk through these things together. So, our social media world says you're blessed by this. Said, how the scholarship? Hashtag blessed. <laughs> Unexpected raise? Thank God, hashtag blessed. Wonderful family? You know, I hashtag blessed. New car? <laughs> hashtag blessed. Am I right about it? Yeah. Everybody wants to hashtag I've been blessed when something happens. But not only does our social media, but usually those are uh, last of those, those were people who, who weren't who weren't going to church. Those were those were Miss Susan. They were they were people who said that they were were saved, sanctified. They, those were the built that one that group. So I said, well, okay. Then, 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 then the, the Christians got to get it right. They, they, they got to get it right. So as Christians, we like to use the term too. Look, look at what Christians say. Says, a loving marriage, I'm going to hashtag blessed. Obedient children, come on somebody, high five me. Somebody high five me. Come on, go red head, high five me. Hashtag blessed. Vibrant ministry, hashtag blessed. Woo, healthy body. Now don't look at this body right here, but look at God on this body. Help, help me body. Help me body. Hashtag blessed. Successful career. How many people just did, did, did you hashtag blessed? You got a successful career. You love going to your job. If you do, can I get an application? Hashtag blessed. Here's one. Trust and pray. Not you, Jay, but half <laughs> Trust and friends. Hashtag blessed. Here's the one, here's the one. I, 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 I'm going to back up because I know I'm going to get some folks to shout on this one. Terry, I, I know, I know, Mr. Terry, you going to shout on this one. Financial abundance. Hashtag blessed. Now, if you can shout on that one, Mr. Terry going to be giving loans. <laughs> in the service so that you can hashtag bless. But when we look at these, look at all the characteristics of it. In order for that, it has to have some type of substance in order for me to say, I'm blessed. But when we look at the, the, the term blessed, when we look at what blessed really means, it doesn't have anything to do with material or substance gain. It doesn't have anything to do with the abilities that you have or the things you have or the resources you have in order for you to say, I'm blessed. Because you can be blessed even living in a cardboard box. You can be blessed even catching the bus or walking where you need to go. You can be blessed in, 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 in any type of situation. I want you to understand. I believe I'm blessed when I don't, when I can sleep through the night and don't get a phone call that somebody on, that has had a tragic event in their life. I wake up and I say, Lord, I thank you. I'm blessed. Some people just to be able to sleep through the night. Is there anybody that's had had a trouble sleeping through the night? And when you can get a good night's sleep, you wake up because God has taken that thing that's been running through your mind. Here's the thing. I'm blessed when I just have peace. That's right. I'm blessed when I just have peace. So we got to understand that being blessed doesn't have anything to do with material blessing. Here, here, here's some things that I found that people like to say about being blessed. Says, 
It's Friday. I'm alive. I'm breathing. I'm living. I'm blessed. Life is good. Anybody ever felt like that? So why it's got to be Friday? <laughs> You can only be, is it Friday because you don't got to go to work no more? Yeah. And deal with those folks, that's why you blessed. But, but, but here, 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 here's something else. This, 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 this one made me laugh. This was by Stevie Wonder. This was Stevie Wonder said. He said, sometimes I feel I'm really blessed to be born because I probably would not last a minute if I were able to see things. Here Stevie Wonder said, if I had to see what y'all got on today. If I had to see what you look like today. If I had to see what y'all, how many of you people know Steve? I know these young people may not know who he is, but, but, but he's, he's the blind, and he plays the musician, he plays piano, everything like that, superstition, and all of those songs. Amen. Come on back, come on back, come on back. Come on back. Don't drift off, don't drift off, come back, come back. But if he had to look at your face. Sometimes. Sometimes, oh, Ed, I wish I was blind when I was preaching. Am I right? Come on, high five me with you, man. Don't leave me out here by my... Uh, it, the faces that we receive, some people they won't smile, they frown, they cringe. It, it's tough. I, I, you know, I was talking to Pastor Jeff. I was saying, give everybody just five minutes to stand up. And I guarantee you, they'll, they'll, what they got through standing up giving their little Easter speech, they'll be, they'll be looking totally different when we stand up to preach. Amen? Because Leroy ain't smiled yet. <laughs> I know I'm preaching good, and Leroy ain't, ain't, ain't smiled yet. But here's another one. Here's another one I saw. He says, bless. He's pushing his car. But he still said, I'm hashtag blessed. But this is the one that, 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 that made me laugh. This is the biggest one that made me laugh. I'm going. So I woke up this morning like, well, it looks like I'm blessed. Anybody know that's Money Mike from, from Friday? He said, well, it looks like I'm blessed. Has anybody ever just had that mentality that it just looks like you're blessed? That, that, that it feels like you're blessed? So, so as I was looking at this text, as I was looking at this text, I began to look at how Jeremiah deals with this text. And, and, and if you could, if you would, go back and, and, and read the things that's going on. So Jeremiah, he, he, he's prophesying to Israel about the things that they have been doing. And they've been doing things that are inappropriate. They've been doing things wrong. They, they, they've been trying to challenge God, even though they're God's people. They've been trying to challenge God on things. And so he begins to have this dialogue with them throughout the book of Jeremiah. But look what he says when he gets to, when he gets to chapter 17. Here, beginning at verse 5. He says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man, who makes flesh his strength, whose heart turned away from the Lord. He begins to, he, he, he contrasts blessings and curses. And so what he's saying is not material blessings. What he's talking about here is happy. The term he's using when you look it up in the Hebrew has nothing to do with material blessings. It has to do with being happy. And so, how many people can say, I'm happy just to be alive? I'm happy to be saved? Oh, y'all have been saved all your life. Well, Michael is happy to be saved. You know, Michael's happy to be alive. I, I'm not talking, just ain't your part of the message. I'll back the truck up and pick you up in just a minute, but it's my part. You know, I'm happy. Sometimes I look at I, I when I look at my wife and I and I, I ask the question why she put up with me. I'm just happy. Y'all 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 may not understand it. I'm hard to live with Pam. <laughs> You know, 
I, 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 I tell this story. It, 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 it's funny now that I think back on it. But um, we moved into a neighborhood that had a couple. And in the, in the neighborhood, you have to have a tree in your front yard. So the, the, when we moved in, there was no tree. So they gave us a year of what they had to get a tree. So, me, being the green fellow that I am, I went to Walmart and I bought these trees. And I bought this tree, and has anybody ever seen Charlie Brown? It looked worse than the Charlie Brown tree. And I planted it with the hope and expectation that it was going to take root and that it was going to do what it was supposed to do. And I watered that tree, and I gave love to that tree, and I did everything to that tree. And that tree, when it was time for it to, to bloom and to blossom, had one leaf. <laughs> one leaf on it. And not only did I buy that tree, but I bought another tree. Because Emerson said, Mommy likes pears. So since Mommy likes pears, we should buy this pear tree. I should have known something else was up when this pear tree was $15. <laughs> <laughs> you can make a home, and at the time I green some, but we can do it. So we planted it in the backyard. We planted it on Tuesday, and by Friday, the dogs had ripped it out the ground. <laughs> so, needless to say, we're still at Walmart purchasing pears. So I ripped out that tree, and I went and I spent some money on a good tree. And I went and I, I got some instructions on what to do, and I found out the reason that the first tree didn't grow, because I didn't plant it deep enough. Oh, y'all y'all catch that in just a minute. Because I didn't plant it deep enough. But when I planted the second tree, I dug down a little bit deeper. So it had a little bit more stuff that it could grab onto. It had a little bit more root in the ground. And so now that tree is growing. I look back on the difference between the first tree. It had no roots. It didn't know what to plant it firmly in the ground. I didn't even have to dig it. All I had to do was just pull it and it came right out. But now after I planted this second tree, that I dug down a little bit further, that I've given it a little bit more ground to take root, that I've given it a little more substance. Oh, y'all don't want me to preach this morning. That I've given it a little more substance. I, I spent the same time watering it. I spent the same time fertilizing it. But the problem is it started off with good. But we put it in, in the ground like it should be. And so now I can't just go out there and pull it up. I can't just go out there and get it. When it, when it rains and it, and it snow and the wind comes, even when it had that, remember we had that real bad windstorm? Other people's trees were coming down, but my little tree. <laughs> Sometimes you don't need some outside sources. 
that you can see the rain to make it grow. But then there's going to be some times that underneath the ground, underneath what you're going through, that you're going to need some nourishment. That, is there anybody ever had a time when you needed somebody, some outside sources to help you? Somebody to come alongside you? Somebody to come? And that's what I, that's what I was doing with the tree. It couldn't get the nourishment that it needed because the ground wasn't like it should be. So I had to go out and fertilize it a little bit. Had I not been willing to help the tree out, it would still not grow. But because I was willing to help it out, it's growing stronger every day. Is there anybody can say, I'm glad that I got some brothers and sisters that are willing to help me out? And because they're willing to help me out, I grow stronger every day. So not only do you got to be positioned, not only do you got to be planted, because look at what he says. He says, here's like a shrub in the desert and shall not see good cause. <laughs> so, but the blessed man is like a tree. Anybody know the difference in a shrub and a tree? A shrub is just that little small thing, and a lot of times it become a nuisance. It just grows wildly out of control. But a tree has a purpose, and it grows like a tree. <laughs> and so he said, it's planted, not just planted anywhere, but it's planted by the water that sends forth its root by the stream. But not only is you're going to have a little blessed life, a blessed life is protected by the Lord. Look what he says. So the cursed man, this is a cursed man, said, he shall dwell in parched places, in the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Anybody ever been parched? Anybody ever been parched? Parched is what? What is parched? Yell out at me. This time you can talk. What is parched? Thirsty, right? She says, they'll be thirsty. They'll be thirsty. They'll be in a parched. And a part, when you're parched, you can't seem to get any relief. It's the difference between being thirsty and being parched. Being thirsty means I go to the water fountain, I take a drink, I feel good. But when I'm parched, means I just can't, I can get no relief. No matter how much I try to drink, I can't get no relief. I can't get nothing from that. He said a, a, a cursed man can, won't find no relief in anything. He goes to the club, no relief. He goes to the crack house, no relief. He goes to that woman's house, no relief. He goes to Bob's house, no relief. He, he bets on the Super Bowl game, no relief. Can't find no relief. Says, but a blessed man, look what he said. Is protected by God because look, he said, he does not fear when he comes. Once again, y'all, y'all, y'all Baptists, but y'all don't know when to shout. <laughs> y'all, y'all don't know when to shout. I'm a, I'm, this is my last week being Baptist. I'm going to be Pentecostal. Y'all <laughs> don't know when to shout. Because it says, does not fear when he comes. Now, I know we're looking at this metaphorically and everybody's sitting here because y'all so holy and y'all so lifted up. Oh, he's talking about a tree. No, what he's talking about is life. And he's saying when he comes, and so you must ain't never had no heat. Y'all must ain't never had no heat. But there's some of us in here, if I can get five people, I'll be six to say that there's times in our life when we got some heat in our life. And if you ain't never in the year of drought. Amen. So what is he talking about that drought? When I can't pay my bills. I ain't anxious. When I don't know where my next meal is coming from. I ain't anxious. When I got that child who wants to go to college, but, I, but my bank account doesn't say they can't. I ain't anxious. When my wife is saying we need a new refrigerator, but my bank account is saying we can't. I ain't anxious. When the doctor said, I got a report, I looked at your thing, and your lab don't look good, I ain't anxious. Because I know that I, my trust is in the Lord. 
the measure of heaven and earth. And so because of my trust being in God, I don't have to worry. I don't have to fear. I don't have to fret. I don't have to be anxious. Because I know that he's got, do you know that nothing that happens in your life knocks God off the throne? Do you know he never looks over at Jesus and says, I did not see that coming. Those crazy people. Oh, Lord, what is me? Oh, Lord, how am I? 
They lifted him up. He died. But he also told me that he stayed dead all Friday. He stayed dead all Saturday morning. He stayed dead all Saturday evening. But the biggest thing that he told me is that Sunday morning. Anybody know what happened early Sunday morning? Can anybody help me preach this? Early Sunday morning. He got up with all power in it. And because he got up, he's coming back. And when he comes back, I'm going with him. So that's why I can live a blessed life. 